In order to have a richer experience using the Unix shell, it is helpful to have an understanding of what Unix actually is. Now, I should stress that this is not necessary. It is quite possible to simply learn the commands and techniques of the Unix shell and have no notion of the Unix system that underlies it. Furthermore, you may already know what Unix is. If you are the sort of person that fits into either of the two above categories, it is entirely possible to skip this chapter or perhaps to come back at the end of the course and listen to it then. None of the remaining chapters of this course depends upon this particular chapter. So the first and most obvious question to ask is, what is Unix? Well, the simple answer to that question is that Unix is the name given to a family of operating systems. There's a couple of things I need to mention about that particular point. Firstly, I need to tell you what an operating system is. Well, an operating system is a software platform upon which programs may be run. Now, that's all very well to say that, just like that, but what does that actually mean? Well, imagine the following scenario. You've gone and purchased or built yourself a computer, and the computer has absolutely no software on it whatsoever. It doesn't have Windows on it, it doesn't have any version of Unix on it, it doesn't have anything, no software. It's just a hard disk and a, a monitor and a screen and a CPU and so on. And imagine further that you've bought yourself a software package that you wish to run on that computer, such as Microsoft Word or some accounting package or something. And here's the question. Is it possible to run that particular package on that raw computer? Well, the answer is no. Not without something else on that computer. In other words, an operating system. Now, if you don't believe that, imagine how you would go about getting that software package onto that raw computer. You might think to yourself, well, I'd just stick the disk in. And then I'd click on the appropriate uh, setup icon, or I'd type in the appropriate setup command. Fair enough. But what would be presenting with you with an icon to click on? What would be presenting you with a command line onto which you could type this particular command to set up your word processor? Well, the answer is there actually has to be some software existing on the computer already in order that you can then install and run the software package that you've just bought. And that software is, naturally enough, the operating system. You can think of an operating system as an analogy with a house, for example. You can think of the operating system as the foundation of the house. It is not possible to build the house, the walls, the roof, the windows, the doors, and so forth, without a solid, even foundation. Once you have your operating system, then you can then build, essentially, whatever you like on top of it. The second point I wanted to mention about the bullet point that you're currently looking at is that Unix itself is not an operating system. Unix is a family of operating systems. The name Unix used to be related to an operating system. There used to be an operating system called Unix. Now, in the current era, there are a variety of operating systems, each of which have very specific names, and not one of them is called Unix. For example, there's Linux, which is a free PC-based version of Unix. There's another one called AIX, which is produced by IBM. It's another version of Unix, but it is not called Unix. So AIX is an operating system, and Linux is an operating system, but Unix is a family of operating systems. An example of a non-Unix operating system is Windows 2000. Another is Windows 98, and another is DOS. Windows 3.1 is not an operating system. On a Windows 3.1 computer, you must first have the operating system DOS installed, and then you can install Windows 3.1 as a graphical multitasking interface above the operating system DOS. Windows 95 and Windows 98, and Windows ME for that matter, if you're interested, are simply a bundling together of DOS and Windows into one package and calling it an operating system. However, Windows NT and Windows 2000 and Windows XP are all true operating systems. Other operating systems include OS2 and the Macintosh's operating system, which has just been released, OS X. Typically, you will find that each operating system is tied to or linked to 
one type of computer or one type of processor architecture. An example of a type of computer might be a SunSpark workstation or an Intel x86 family of processors. Examples of Intel x86 processors include the 386, the 486, the Pentium, Pentium 2, Pentium 3 and so on. So you'll find, at least as far as Unix is concerned, that Linux will only run on Intel x86 processors, while Solaris, which is produced by Sun Microsystems, will only run on Sun workstations. You'll also find that most application packages, if you buy a particular program, you'll find that it will only run on one operating system, or perhaps one family of operating systems. So a package that you buy for Windows will not run on Linux, and vice versa. So hopefully we now have a reasonable understanding of what an operating system is. Let's talk a little bit more about Unix specifically. As you've probably guessed by now, there are actually many flavors or variants of Unix produced by a variety of software vendors around the world. Some of these are free, some of these are sold, some of these are quite expensive. Most run on particular types of computer architecture. And most are incompatible with each other in the sense that if you get a program designed to run on one, it may not run on other versions of Unix. For example, if I was to take, say, the Vi text editor from Linux and take it to a Sun workstation and put it, copy it onto the hard disk there and try and run it, I might find that I could not run it. However, if I took the original programming source code for that program and took that to the Sun workstation and compiled it, I would find a functionally identical version of Vi that would run on that particular computer. However, that is a technical process and most end users would not be interested in doing that at all. We will now take a brief look at Unix history. It will help you to understand the relationship between the various versions of Unix.